Misfits Audio Productions presents Restored Old Time Radio. We claim no rights to it. This is released free for entertainment purposes only to restore interest in the golden days of radio. Thank you to Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com for intro music. Remember to visit MisfitsAudio.com. Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal, invites you to rocket into the future with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off. Minus five, four, three, two, one, zero. As roaring rockets blast off to distant planets and far-flung stars, we take you to the age of the conquest of space with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. It's a quiet day at Space Academy, and in their dormitory room, cadets Tom Corbett and Roger Manning are taking some time off for a bit of intensive study. Suddenly, the silence is broken by a message on the intercom. Attention, please. Attention, please. Cadets Corbett and Manning report to briefing room number three on the double. Cadets Corbett and Manning on the double to briefing room three. Number three. That'll be the next door, Roger. Wait a minute, Tom. Let me cross my fingers. For what? Luck. I only hope it's Captain Strong and not Commander Arkwright in there. What's the difference? If you're in a jam, you're in a jam. Not quite. The captain just sort of trims my jets, but the commander, he blasts them. (laughs) Fingers all crossed? And toes. Let's go. No commander. Thank Jupiter. How do you do, gentlemen? Uh, How do you do, sir? Cadets Corbett and Manning. That's right, sir. Permit me to introduce myself, Colonel Roscoe Wilberforce. Colonel? The uh, rank is an honorary one. (coughs) Here, these orders from Commander Arkwright will better explain my presence. Oh, thank you, sir. Wilberforce. That's a familiar name, sir. It should be, my boy. To make it known, I've spent enough credits to have it emblazoned across the sky in letters of fire. I, cadet, am the proprietor and sole owner of Wilberforce's worldwide circus, the greatest show on earth. Of course. I remember seeing it when I was a kid. Well, Grandpa, you're going to see a lot more of it. You've read the orders? Yes, sir. What cooks, Tom? We're being placed on detached service and charged with transporting the Colonel's circus to the planet Venus. A circus? Not A, my boy. The circus. Through space, I may be blast happy, but I don't get it. A cultural mission of the greatest magnitude, Cadet Manning. An interplanetary circus. Yes, for the first time, the greatest show on Earth shall become the greatest show in the universe. But transporting a three-ring circus through space... Only one, my boy. This is in the nature of an experiment. The orders say that you have a space freighter for transportation. That's right, Cadet Corbett. The Leo, most suitably named for the first lion I ever owned. A splendid beast. Which brings up another point. Are there going to be animals in this space circus, Colonel? But of course, lad. What circus would be a circus without animals? (laughs) We'll be transporting my star act, Princess Marja, and her 20 ferocious felines. 20? You think that's too many? I think one is too many. Roger. We can't actually say, Colonel, until we see the ship and its loading and storage facilities. Excellent. I have a jet car outside to take us to the spaceport. Are your animal men handy so that we can discuss the problem with them? Princess Marja herself is there with my chief animal handler, Vance Tremor. Princess? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! That's it, Princess. Are all the cats fed, Vance? Tearing the meat apart and purring like kittens. Mm. When's the colonel going to show up with those space jockeys? Well, he left the academy a few minutes ago. Ought to be here shortly. Think I got time to get a bite before they show up? Sure, go ahead, Vance. Just tell me where you'll be in case we need you, huh? Down at the spaceport cafeteria. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Hello, Vance. 
Lance. Hi, Mr. Dimitro. You're late. What kept you? Feeding the cat. Here, let me punch up my food order. This apple pie. Cup of coffee. That's all. As soon as I get my food, we can talk. Okay. Now, what's on your mind, Mr. Dimitro? Can't you guess? Hmm. I ain't bad. Well, now, my guess would be you won't offer me a job with your circus. Let's suppose you're right. I got a good outfit. Not as big as Wilberforce's, but it can be. Not if he pulls off this interplanetary tour. With all the publicity and advertising he'll get, your show won't draw a fly. I know that. But suppose he can't pull it off. The publicity will backfire. What's more, he'll lose a fortune in credits. Which could put him out of business and leave you without competition. Well, what's your offer? Offer? Don't be coy, Mr. Dimitro. You want me to sabotage, ruin the Wilberforce show. So what'll you pay? Blunt, aren't you? I get to the point, that's all. Good. Shall we say 50,000 credits? I never did like round numbers. I prefer percentages. Meaning? I do the job and we're partners. I get a 50% interest in your show. Half the show? That's ridiculous. Half of something is better than all of nothing. Outrageous. I certainly... And nothing's what you'll have if this interplanetary stunt works. We got a deal? Look here, Vance. Is it a deal? I can't give... All right. It's a deal. Good. And we're partners. What do you plan to do? I don't know yet, but you can bet your last credit on this, partner. Wilberforce's circus is never going to give a performance on Venus. Or, for that matter, anywhere else. Tom Corbett and Roger Manning are on detached service from Space Academy under orders to help transport an Earth circus to the planet Venus. Now, with circus owner Roscoe Wilberforce, they arrive at the spaceport, where the circus is ready to be loaded aboard the space freighter Leo. Oh, I have been waiting for you, Colonel. Meet Cadets Corbett and Manning. And this, gentlemen, is Marja, mistress of 20 ferocious felines. Skip the dealing, Colonel. My friends call me Maggie, Maggie O'Neill. Swell, I definitely plan on being friends. How nice. Marja, the boys are going to supervise the loading of our space freighter. They want to see what plans you've made for transporting the cats. All right, Colonel, I'll show them the setup. I'm going to check up on some financial details. If you need me, I'll be in the box office car. I'm sure Miss O'Neill can take care of us, Colonel. I know she can. Yes, of course, of course. I'll see you later. All right, gentlemen, if you'll follow me. It'll be a pleasure. Simmer down, space boy. This is business. Tell me, gorgeous, how did a dreamy space doll like you ever become an animal trainer? At a very early age, I got my start taming wolves. Like you. Oh. Satisfied, Roger? I feel a drop in the temperature. Suddenly become as cold as the rings of Saturn. Well, let's go into the menagerie tent. My big cats can always make it hot for you. (laughs) Come on, Roger, let's go. And here's the last of my beauties. Cecil, meet some space jockeys. He doesn't sound like a Cecil. Hey, don't put your hand in there. He likes to have his ears rubbed. Got a bit of wolf in him. A wolf? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Manning. Rub his ears. Thanks, but I've still got a lot of use for this arm. So I gathered. Too bad. You know the old saying, love me, love my cat. I think you've met your match, Roger. Well, Miss O'Neill, where are the shipping cages? Why, the ones they're in. We've always used them on the tour. Well, this is a little more than a tour, especially for 20 animals. But why can't you... You see, Miss, when a rocket ship blasts off, everything has to be fastened down tight, including the crew. I don't get it. What's the problem? On blast off, if those animals aren't secure, they'll be thrown to the floor of their cages with enormous force, enough to kill them, perhaps. Sure, you're just going to have to tie your pets down, sweetheart. Very funny, Mr. Manning. Very funny. No, Miss O'Neill, Roger means it. Tell me, when the cats get sick, how does the veterinarian treat them? If he's smart, he shoots them. Those animals are worth 5,000 credits apiece. You don't shoot 5,000 credits. You use the vet's cage over there. This one with the straps? Uh Uh-huh. How does it work? Well, the sick animals prod it into the cage. Uh We snag his feet, throw him down, and then pass those leather straps over the animal. Which straps him down so he can't move at all. Right. 
That way, a vet can even pull an animal's tooth and hat. Some fun. There's our answer. Equip 20 cages with straps, tie the animals down for blast-off, and release them afterwards. Oh, we could do that. We look, honey, as far as I'm concerned... As far as you're concerned, Roger, you'd better start developing an affection for cats. Huh? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Pretty kitty. Nice kitty. <laughs> you crazy cadet. Fans, when I open the cage, you start prodding Cleopatra into the other cage. Cleopatra, yet. Tom and Roger, as soon as her paws get in those loops, pull her up against the bars of the cage. Then Vance and I'll anchor her to the floor. Okay, we're ready. Well, here goes. Poker, Vance. Go on, Cleo, move. She doesn't want to. Wait, here she comes. Watch it. She's almost in the loops. We're watching. That's it. Yank. Pull her, boys. Come on, Vance. Pull harder, Roger. Pull. She's doing some pulling herself. Keep it tight. Like the tunes from ancient history. Hold that tiger. Roger, don't make jokes. Keep the rope taut. She's getting one paw loose. Watch out, today. Watch out. Oh, she got me. Ripped my arm. Keep the rope taut, Roger. Whatever you do. I got it. My arm feels like it's on fire. I can see. Cleo slashed right through your uniform jacket. You're bleeding. Tell me something I don't know. Hold tight, boys. While I get this strap through. Watch huh? out for that free paw. I will, I will. Here, take it, Vance. I got it. A few more seconds, boys. Yep. All right. Uh, that's it. Uh. You can release the ropes. She's secure now. And unhappy. Look at those eyes blaze at us. I never saw anything worse even on the dark side of Mercury. I think it's going to work, Vance. Yeah, if my arms hold out. Now, let me look at that scratch, Rog. Yeah, I don't Cleo's think so. claws didn't do much more than scratch the skin, fortunately. But we better get you over to the spaceport infirmary right away. Ah, I'm all right. I can take it, Junior. Let's not run the risk of infection. We'll get the arm fixed, and then, well, there's only 19 more cats to go. Only? By Jupiter, Tom, I want to get in outer space. Where the only thing we'll have to worry about is bumping into a nice, gentle asteroid. <laughs> On the good ship, Leo Raj? Yeah, Junior. We blasted clear without any trouble, which is a surprise to me, I must admit. How's the arm? Okay, just stings a little once in a while. Oh, good. Then we're on our way and in pretty good, good shape. Yeah, considering the mission we're on, yeah. Personally, Roger, I think it could be fun. Sure, a million laughs. Corbett and Manning, the cosmic clowns. I'll bet we wind up doing an act with this outfit. <laughs> we'll be the rage of Venus. You've got enough ham in you to do it. I'm ignoring you. And speaking of Venus reminds me. Hmm? I better go down and check the animals again. Especially the one called Princess Marsha. Could be, Junior, could be. How often do you want her to trim your jets, Roger? That Thomas was unearthed. Manning never functions properly as an earthling. Space is my element. But you'll have to excuse me now. I must instruct the princess in the mysteries of space travel. Go ahead, Roger. But one thing. Yeah? When she takes your head off and hands it to you, bring it back here. I've always wanted a solid ivory bowling ball. <laughs> This, Marge, is the control deck. Oh, fascinating, Roger. Say, who... Oh, Roger. The princess wanted to see the control deck. Oh, sure. Roger's been showing me over the ship. And note the head, Tom, still on the shoulders. Huh? Just a private joke, Miss O'Neill. No. Oh, I prefer Marge or Maggie. <laughs> right, Marge. Oh, by the way, has Roger told you yet that taking you to Venus Why, is like... Junior. Marge, they call Venus the beauty of the planets. Well, taking you to Venus is like... Like carrying... Uranium to Pluto. Roger, I think I detect that odor of wolf again. Oh, Margie, you got me all wrong. I'm just... You're a... going to wish you were, Roger. Huh? Both of you turn very quietly. Look at the hatchway. We've got company. What are you... Cats! How'd they get loose? A tiger and two lions. Tom! Don't move. I'll handle this. Thanks, Margie, but I've got more faith in the peril array. Tom, use yours. I haven't got one. Remember, this is a commercial flight. Well, there must be one on board. Sure, and the weapons locker right outside. Maybe I can slip... 